But the problem is, in our own contemporary way of thinking and in our own contemporary way of doing church, we oftentimes like to try to depend on our own energies and on our own intellect rather than trusting and depending upon God. But what we must understand, if we are to get back to the basics and do the work of the Lord, and if we are to place God's work as first priority, we must first of all have the right response. And what we see in the text is that they have the right response. There again, God speaks again to Haggai, this prophet. And then Haggai speaks to the leaders of that believing community. And the, believer, the leaders speak to that believing community. What God realized was, if they would hear my prophet's voice, and if they would respond to my prophet's voice, I would then know that they have truly responded to me. Because if they respond to my prophet's voice, it's a clear indication that they are really hearing from me and they have a desire to do my work. But the problem is, many of us, we want to have these multiple visions in the church and everybody wants to see and have a vision. But if we have multiple visions, that leads to what is known as division. Because God speaks to his prophet and the prophet vision was the vision of God. God's vision to the prophet was that the temple would be rebuilt. And the way that God wanted to communicate that vision to the people is he used his prophet. That is God's way. I don't care whether we like it or not. God has a divine order. And I'll tell you that if we're going to do it God's way, we here at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church will always follow God's pattern we will always do it God's way so therefore when we hear folks saying I can't see it and I can't understand it oftentimes it's because they were not ever meant to see it because you can't see spiritual things through carnal eyes so some folk are looking through the wrong lens but when you look through the lens of divine spirituality and you place God's vision under microscopic scriptorial scrutiny you can always know where it is that God is leading us but you must first stand still and wait to hear a word from the Lord by way of the prophet of God so he speaks again to to these two leaders, Zerubbabel, which is the civic leader, and he speaks to Joshua, who is the religious leader, and when he speaks to them, God understands that if the leaders would start to lead like they ought to, then the followers could understand the direction in which they are supposed to go. But what had happened in their day, what had happened in their culture was the leaders had become lazy and lethargic. And when the leaders had become lazy and lethargic, they presented a pattern or a paradigm for the followers. Therefore, the followers also became lazy and lethargic. And then when you had that much laziness and lethargy creeping around in a believing community, no work was going to get done other than the work that they had chosen for themselves. And and that's a dangerous thing when we get just like these Jews and we get lazy as leaders and a believing community and place our interest before God's interest. He would do just like he did those Jews in verse number 11. He will zip up the blessings and he will shut us off from blessings. He say, until I can get your attention to do what I need you to do, maybe I need to block some blessings from you. He says, in essence, I'm not really blocking them from you because in verse 10 he says, because of you. This is what I have had to do. This is good preaching, right? So he speaks to these leaders. See, the real problem was the leaders were not doing what they were supposed to do. And since the leaders were not doing what they were supposed to do, the people could not do what God really intended for them to do. Because good leaders know how to go follow a good leader. Good leaders are customarily good followers. And what the Lord says is, I need this group to have the right response. And the response that they had was, according to the text, the Bible said that they obeyed and then they feared God. See, this word obey in the Hebrew is Shema. And that word Shema in the Hebrew means to hear. 
And in one of the stems, not only does it mean to hear, but it also means to obey. So in essence, the right response to the word of God is as James says it, we ought to be hearers and doers of the word. We have a lot of hearers, but we don't have enough doers. And what the Bible says is because they feared God, they began to have hold God in a place of awesomeness, and they began to hold God in a place of reverence. And when they feared God, then they really could hear the voice of God and be obedient to God. The problem is in the church nowadays, nobody fears God. No, nobody fears God. No, nobody holds him in high esteem because if we did, some of the stuff that we find ourselves doing, we wouldn't do if we really feared God. And you know, I, I use this illustration. My, my baby girl, she fears her dad. And she obeys me because we have this history between us. And historically, she has known when she would not obey her dad, there was a certain level of fear that I would have to invoke upon her with the hand. Lay your hands on me, I don't mind. That's what she was saying when she wouldn't do what I had told her to do. Therefore, and I know y'all think that. Let me say this aside. No, that's not child abuse. That's just good. That's not child abuse. But two things they did. They obeyed God and they feared God. See, if we obey God, that means that this word Shema means that we have been attentive. And watch this. It was not the custom of the day for people to really, in such a short time frame, hear and respond to the prophet. But see, I believe they knew historically what had happened when they would not hear. The Lord had to pull some things from them that they were accustomed to. But when they responded right, the Lord was able to bless them. Now watch the text. The text says it like this. They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him. The reason they were so in tune to obey him and to hear the words of God is because they understood that he was speaking not his own words but the words of the Lord. If you don't believe him, watch the whole message of Haggai. He speaks as God speaks to him. And I, I want you to look at something. It was God who sent Haggai to them. That means that God was giving them another chance because he could have just left them alone and said, forget it, you're not going to do right. But because God is long suffering God oftentimes give us another chance and what the Lord did he sent Haggai look at the text it says God sent Haggai to them that means that Haggai did not go on his own Haggai did not make an appointment to show up so he was sent based on the divine providence of God come here somebody let me talk to you when I was in Cortland Alabama I was there on my own mind in my own business but somewhere between me coming from Florence or Decatur Alabama and to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the Lord got in the mix because he wanted me to set the house in order. He wanted me to come here and speak his words to his people. Now, there are some folk who may have a problem with me speaking the words of the master. So let me say what I said to the early morning congregation. One door, two door, three door, four. If you don't like it, hit the door, baby. Holla, see you, deuce it. Won't you? Whatever. Holla. Bye bye. You know, if you can't follow God's way, maybe this might not be the place you want to serve. Just perhaps. Just perhaps you need to find somewhere else because I have a sneaky suspicion that if I keep my ear to the voice of God, he will speak to me. And if he speaks to me, I have a divine mandate on my life to speak back to you because he sent me here and I am the hand guy for this community. And I've got to tell the truth. Because there is a word that God gives to me to give to his people. And if you don't like it, you don't have a problem with the mail carrier. You've got a problem with the one who provided the mail, and that is God. I'm just a mail carrier, baby.